Hey, what's up guys? Ken here from the Retro Toy Escapades channel. Now, I'm a big fan of the 80s toy and cartoon franchise Mask, Mobile Armored Strike Command. If you've clicked on the video, I trust many of you are as well. The cartoon and toy line featured a range of really cool vehicles that would transform into combat units, something of a cross between G.I. Joe and the Transformers. The pilots were specially trained agents led by leader Matt Tracker, and they each wore helmets or masks that were powered with the ability to grant the user unique functions, such as the power to fly, levitate matter, or fire dangerous projectiles. The toys, in case you didn't already realize, were 100% certified awesome. The majority of the vehicles, such as the Thunderhawk Camaro, Raven Corvette, the Lamborghini Stiletto, and the Detonator Volkswagen, just to name a few, were all based on licensed vehicle models of the time. Among 80s properties, Mask has never been as huge as other toy and cartoon franchises of the era such as Masters of the Universe, Transformers, or G.I. Joe, but it has a very dedicated fan base that lasts until today. The cartoon series lasted for a full 75 episodes, while the toys remain on shelves with new waves of product from 1985 to 1988. Mask as a property has been mostly dormant for almost the last 30 years. But sometime back, it was announced that the series would be rebooted as part of a new comic book partnership between Hasbro Toys and IDW Comics. The success of this series would mean the likelihood of new toys and maybe even a feature film. When the new comic was launched, the creative team led by African-American writer Brandon Easton had made a revision to the lead character role of Matt Tracker. In the original cartoon incarnation, Matt Tracker was a white millionaire philanthropist who used his resources to develop a peacekeeping team of agents from all across the globe to protect it primarily from the evil forces of the terrorist group Venom, led by Miles Mayhem. The original comic books provided with the toys in the 1980s also reveal that Matt Tracker and Miles Mayhem used to be business partners who worked together on the technology to create the mask vehicles until Mayhem stole a part of the technology for his own use, causing the death of Matt's brother Andy in the process. In the new comic series from IDW, Matt Tracker is now a troubled African-American, training as part of a special operations unit led by Miles Mayhem. Mayhem is secretly selecting the best operatives from the training at test sessions to form a separate unit under his own agenda. It seemed unclear at first as to why such a change to a major character such as Matt Tracker was necessary, but there is a quote from writer Brandon Easton sometime last year that might shed some light. In this quote, Brandon Easton is commenting on the release of the new Matt Tracker action figure from Hasbro, based off his design. He says here that, I felt it was a good idea to have a black man be a heroic figure instead of a sidekick. But the reality is that, the original Mars series already had a heroic African-American in the form of Hondo McLean, a core member of Mars who was not only the team's tactical strategist, but who also commanded the two coolest rides from the early series of toys, Firecracker and Hurricane. Incidentally, the Hurricane, which was a 57 Chevy, was my first and only mass toy as a kid. Most of the kids in my class, who were big into mass at the time, preferred the more modern and sporty looking vehicles like the Thunderhawk and Raven. But I knew a classic ride when I saw one. So my question is, what the hell has happened to Hondo McLean in this current new incarnation of Mask? 
Another thing that got me scratching my head about a statement like that was that right from the get-go, the original mass concept was beyond that of any single race or ethnicity. It was ahead of its time in being the only cartoon or toy franchise of any era with the most diverse cast of multiracial characters from all across the globe, all united in the common goal to fight terror. You had the Asian, Bruce Sato, the Brit, Alex Sector, the Frenchman, Jacques Lefleur, the Latino, Julio Lopez, the Russian, Boris Bushkin, the Indian, Ali Bombay, the native Indian, Nevada Rushmore, and many others. Leave a comment in the video and let me know who was your favourite. The new storyline put together by Brandon and his team is certainly intriguing and has some interesting possibilities. They could have maintained the current rookie character as played by Matt Tracker in the central role and as the narrator of the story, but just not name him Matt Tracker. Have the real Matt Tracker emerge as a senior, retired operative who comes out to assist the new team of young recruits once Miles Mayhem's true intentions of world domination become known. Or something along those lines. I mean, it's just a suggestion. Ultimately, I think that many of us would just want our pop culture heroes to remain true to their established origins. Let me put it another way. I sure wouldn't want to see iconic characters such as Blade or the Black Panther to be portrayed by anyone other than an African-American. Or Storm Shadow from G.I. Joe to be portrayed by someone other than an Asian. Guys, before I go, I just wanted to add that when it came to Mask, there was no member of the team that ever felt more important than the other. They always seemed equal. So hey, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you and I'll catch you guys again soon. Good night.